Am I the a-hole for refusing to buy my ex's daughter a birthday gift? My ex cheated on me for most of our relationship. I found out during my pregnancy with our daughter and he had the other girl pregnant too. My daughter was a June baby and theirs was an October baby. They also got married that following February. To say things between us have been tense is an understatement. Ex's wife didn't know immediately that he was with me or that we had been together since we were 15. She hated me for overshadowing her own pregnancy with mine. She hated me even worse when she needed an emergency C-section and had so many complications that a hysterectomy had to be carried out. The tension between us all then was at its worst. Ex's wife wanted me to give up my daughter for them to raise both girls together as real sisters. And when I refused, we had all the drama. I don't even think she would have been able to love my daughter had I done that. But I think she wanted more than one badly enough that she thought my daughter would do since she was already born. Ex and I now communicate through an app mostly. We share custody for our daughter, 14, and exchanges happen at school pickup time to minimize the contact between us. This has worked for many years, though I know not ideal for my daughter overall. My daughter and her half-sister have a very high conflict relationship. It's over me and Ex's wife. Ex's daughter had picked up her mom's attitude toward me and dislikes me and believes I keep her sister from her real family. My daughter doesn't like Ex's wife either, which annoys her half-sister. This has been communicated to me a number of times by my daughter and also by my ex, who will send random texts about it. I never respond because our mandated communication is done through the app. Now, Hex and his wife had some financial problems over the last six months. For my daughter's birthday, she got a card and a gift card, and my ex told her in advance he wouldn't be able to get her much. I was able to get her a present as normal though. I splurged a little this year and got my daughter a gaming laptop. She was so happy. Ex became aware of this when my daughter spent a bit of time with her grandparents and asked them if she could bring the laptop to their house. Ex told her about it and she told him I bought it as her birthday gift. Now, Ex's daughter's birthday is a couple of weeks away and he wants me to buy her a gift, something I have never done before. He said the money situation is still tight and he doesn't want her to get nothing. I told him I would not be buying her a gift and he blew up the app in my phone, saying I should be doing this, so his daughter isn't left with a lackluster birthday. Ex said I had never done anything to help the dynamic with the girls, I'd never cared about a pain he and his wife were in, and this was one thing I could do. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your ex is delusional if he thinks seriously that his daughter is somehow your responsibility. I will advise your daughter to keep her gaming laptop at your home because I can already see the drama coming, when her father will force her to keep it at her place so his daughter can play with it whenever she wants, or worse, try to gift it to his daughter. If she does keep it at our home, her grandparents' house was the only place it went otherwise, but it was just them and her, so no concerns about it being taken and given to her half-sister. She was already concerned her dad might make her share it, which is why she never tried to bring it to her dad's house. You are only responsible for your daughter, and always keep records of things better safe than sorry. Your ex is simultaneously stunningly entitled and delusional. Please ignore him. That is the easiest NTA ever. Ex's wife wanted me to give up my daughter for them to raise both girls together as real sisters. Even by AITA standards, this is outrageous. That's how I felt when she said this to me. I never even gave it a second of consideration, but if I had, it would have set my daughter up for a terrible childhood. She looks just like me, and I know that would have impacted how she was treated. As it was, Ex's wife resented her as well as me. So the fact she demanded that was even more outrageous. You're a kinder person than I am. I'd have told her to go bother one of the other women her husband is cheating on her with if she wants another kid to raise. Next story. Would I be the a-hole if I told my husband I didn't want kids because of him? I want to start off by saying I love my 28 female husband, 33 male. And he's a great man and amazing to me. And everyone he loves. Yes, we've had issues, but we're very big into communicating them and can come to a solution quite quickly. However, my husband and I are both diagnosed OCD. His is germs and filth, while mine is more everything has a place, organization and perfection basically. With that said, we disagree in many things since I don't care about pet hair or crumbs on a counter, etc. And he doesn't care if his stuff is everywhere, as long as it's clean stuff. Backstory. Before we moved in together, my animals always slept with me, were allowed onto furniture, etc., and once we moved in together, that stopped. 
So, it talks about our future kids, what extracurricular we might want them to try, and so forth. I used to want kids, but now I'm very much leaning towards not. If it happens, I'll be delighted and love them unconditionally, but I think I would prefer not having them. So, on to the part where I could be the a-hole. He's made comments about how he doesn't think he could change diapers or deal with his bit up, so I'll have to do it. I don't agree with that at all, because I think parenthood should be all hands on deck from conception on. I worry about wanting to go somewhere by myself or with friends, and him not wanting to feed or change the baby while I'm gone, or having to get up every night, throughout the night, to do this. I don't blame him for not wanting to because of his OCD, but I'm scared. And what happens if the baby has a blowout or spit up on a couch or on the bed? He already doesn't let our animals on them. I don't want to be the 100% cleaning up after them, or changing them or feed them. I also want to point out that I'm a big napper and sleeper. I take one to two hour naps at least three times a week and need at least nine hours of sleep a night. He can only sleep for four to five hours a day, so he usually goes to bed at three to four a.m. and is up by eight. I know that will change if we have kids, but to lose that much sleep to do everything while he can't because of the OCD is giving me major anxiety. We both love each other very much, but I feel like I'd basically be a single parent doing everything for the first few years if not more if we have kids. Edit, thank you for the suggestions and comments, but I wanted to clarify some things. 1. He isn't making any excuses. He has voiced his concerns and I have voiced mine. He has never once said, I will not do this. So for those saying he is the a-hole for that is wrong. I'm just thinking logically. 2. I put the sleep part in there because I wanted to preface my way of living. I know I would lose a great deal of that sleep if we have kids. I was using that to use as an example of what if I wanted to take a nap and the baby needed a diaper change. 3. For those saying I should try being around kids to see how I can handle it with my OCD. I have. I'm an aunt to 15 nieces and nephews under 10. Was a nanny and a daycare teacher for one and a half to two-year-olds. And I've been to therapy for my OCD. And yes, they are messy. Lol. It does give my anxiety to see the mess, but I have no issue going behind and tidying up after them. And when I was a teacher, I always taught to clean up after themselves so it wasn't too bad. He has two toddler niece and nephews and is great, but has never been around them when sick. Always gives them to his sister when they need a diaper change. So that would be a good starting point. Thanks. 4. For those saying he is the a-hole because I would be alone when I was sick, he wouldn't take care of me, etc., also wrong. I just had food poisoning in a worse way a few days ago and he was amazing. He got me what I needed. Comforted me, got me medicine, and constantly checked on me but just stayed out of the bathroom when I was in there and only kissed me on top of my head. Congrats! You're among the few people that can look at their life and medical conditions and think real hard on if you're actually prepared to have kids or not. Stand firm, kids are not a trial run. Once you let that genie out, you're stuck. Yes, no one gets to nope out of the greedy bits of parenting. If he is already saying he won't do any of the hard work, then it is 100% right call to say that you refuse to sign up to be the only on-call parent. And those greedy bits may be 90% of the time for the first year or so. My youngest was naughty, slash sick, slash poop exploding near enough every day for the first 10 months of life, when my eldest brought back every bug going from preschool. They both overlapped chicken pox and then hand, foot and mouth, so that was a full two months either side of summer when we couldn't take them anywhere. If he has OCD over germs, he'll never see kids. I'll say one thing, don't have kids if he can't handle poop and body fluids. This. My daughter was six months old, not feeling good at all, had a small fever. Wasn't too worried and tied it down to teething. I was holding her, trying to console her and sing to her. She projectile vomited in my face, and then continued to leave a trail and a decent amount in the tub, which was three rooms in a hallway away from where we were. Stomach flu with a baby's no joke. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife I don't want kids with her, because she threatens divorce nearly every time we fight? My wife, 34 female, and I, 36 male, have been married for a little over five years. Shortly after we got married, we agreed to try to have a kid after five years or so. We wanted to travel together during that time. We traveled a lot and got to have some amazing experiences together. Now I'm very hesitant because nearly every time we get into a fight, she threatens divorce. Nothing egregious has happened within our relationship. There's been no infidelity, no wondering who the other has been out with, etc. But she comes from a long line of divorced family members. She jokes about our marriage being her trial marriage. I come from a family who believes in staying married and working through issues, unless someone royally messes up. 
I don't take these threats lightly and have been hesitant to have a child with her after continual threats of divorce. During our current ongoing fight, she has in fact contacted a divorce lawyer. After she said she was going to and I told her to go ahead, though has not followed through. What are y'all thoughts? Am I the a-hole for not wanting to have a child with my wife at this point? Now for the top comments. My ex-husband did this continually as well, until the day I agreed and filed for divorce while he desperately tried to backpedal. Oh well, too late. This is exactly what's going to happen. A dopey don't fall for the backpedaling, because they will never change. Same with my ex-wife. Every stupid argument was instantly turned into an I'll divorce you power play. She even told her best friend that since she's been married once already, it's all the same if she divorces. Go figure. She pretended to be devastated and blindsided when I put the signed divorce papers on the table. Divorce. And even the word being tossed around. It's like the solution now to everything. Like people being so happy. I believe there are many couples getting divorced as they see other relatives or friends get divorced. And the stigma is long gone. It's similar to when family members and friends first start getting married. As OP even mentioned, divorce is very common in her family. Expecting that to be totally different for her is being a little naive. That would make me sick if both my spouse and myself just tossed that word around so lightly. It's not only totally disrespectful, but obnoxious as well. It would sound like a hopeless mantra, and like the future just looks dark. If I overheard her speaking like that in public, I'd be tempted to tell the big mouth to quiet down. You would be insane to have a child with her. She is not invested in this. Either she needs to have a serious wake-up call, or this needs to end. She treats your marriage and relationship as disposable. Eventually, she's going to go through with it. Not the a-hole. No, she's using these threats as a form of emotional abuse, and she will have a surprise Pikachu face when it takes her up on her words. During fight, we should get divorced. You know what? Fine. Here are the papers. I had them ready. You just need to sign them. Shocked Pikachu face. This is what I did. She was abusive, and had herself deluded that she had control over me. She did to an extent, of course. I loved her, and tried very hard to give her time to learn to do better. She just got worse, kept threatening to get divorced. So I had her parents take her to their house, did the paperwork myself, and got it done as fast as possible. A good man shouldn't waste his time on an abusive woman. There's plenty better out there. Last story. Am I the a-hole because I don't want to spoil my stepkids? I have a 14-year-old daughter from a previous relationship, and my wife has two sons, 16 and 13. I had a vasectomy after my daughter to make sure I won't have other kids. I spoil my daughter however I can. This includes brand clothes, expensive schools, and best electronics. And before anyone decides that my daughter is a brat, I should say that she's an extremely well-behaved kid. The problem is, my wife and her ex can't afford the same for their sons. And they are angry that our kids have completely different living situations while living at the same house. My wife thinks I should be spoiling her sons too, but I can't afford it. So I told her that's not my problem, and they have two parents who should be spoiling them. You're the a-hole for marrying someone with a child when you had zero intention of treating them as a full member of your family. It's fine to not want to be a step-parent, but then you shouldn't assume that role in the first place. My thoughts exactly. Why do people do this? Why? Why? Go get child-free women for God's sake. You're the a-hole. Look, if this is how you want to behave, that's your prerogative. But you have absolutely no business blending families with this attitude. You're setting the kids up to feel jealousy and resentment. And this isn't going to help the kids adjust to being in each other's lives. I kind of feel like the mother is also an a-hole in this scenario. How could you marry someone who treats her kids this way? Moreover, how could she marry someone and move in with them without discussing her financial needs and expectations? I think everyone sucks here, because if she just expected this guy to spoil her kids rotten without communicating that before they got married and move in, well, that's on her for not communicating. You're the a-hole. Some stepdad you are. I'm grateful my stepdad wasn't like this. He spoiled the heck out of me, along with his two other kids. It's not that hard to treat your stepkids the same. I can't imagine how her sons feel. Stop spending so much on your daughter if it's causing you to not be able to spoil the other kids too. That's so unfair. Step up and be a better stepdad. You're the a-hole 100% OP. You're the wicked stepdad. Why did you choose to become a stepdad? Your behavior is so gross. I could never be attracted to you as the mother of these two boys. Just seeing how you treat them. Edit. 
I've been thinking about your comments, and I think you are right. I can't treat kids that live under the same roof differently, so I ask my wife to move out of my home for now. We will try counseling, and we will see how that goes. But if I have to choose between her and my daughter, it's always going to be my daughter. She's not happy as she has a low-paying job, and moving out means downgrading their life.